In this war of mine, you do not play as an elite soldier, rather a group of civilians trying to survive in a besieged city, struggling with a lack of food, medicine, and constant danger from snipers and hostile scavengers, the game provides an experience of war seen from an entirely new angle. Now, I've already made an honest review and a spoiler-free beginner's guide tackling this very game, including the first 7 days, nighttime, daytime, and all 5 character states. Hunger, wounds, illness, tiredness, and mood. Now, for this video, I'll be focusing on every single tip and trick that I can give you so that you can play this war of mine with the least common mistakes as possible. Without further ado, here are all the tips and tricks I've learned, gathered, thought of, and found online. If you're gonna take one tip from this video, it would be to manage your time as efficiently as possible. As this is a time and section based survival game, squeezing as many actions in a day or night would be the smartest thing to do. Be kind. 11 bit studio's whole design philosophy is that actions are just choices and consequences. I personally only did what seemed to be morally right, and I've always been rewarded later on. Now, I'm not telling you to do exactly what I did, just try to be kind. Clear the shelter of debris and gather all the existing resources. This will be everything from drawers, cabinets, containers, and even supplies behind rubble. You would need this in the first three days. Just to set up, build a metal workbench. You'll need this for the rest of the game and advancing it to level 2 will give you the capacity to create a hatchet, one of the most useful tools in the game, able to chop furniture into fuel and people into not so people. With that said, build a crowbar. You'll mostly use this to open locks and in fact, most of the locks in the game can be opened by that one single crowbar. Lockpicks do work on locks, obviously, but they're mostly used for silent unlocking, normally done when scavenging or sneaking into places. Build a bed for all your survivors minus one. Since one of your survivors will be guarding the shelter all night, you wouldn't really need that extra bed and it's better to use those materials somewhere else. Upgrade your stove when you get the chance. It'll help save up more fuel and it'll mean less wood for you to gather, saving up space in your inventory whenever you are scavenging. At the very least, in the first seven days, upgrade your simple work shop just so you can build boards to fortify your vase your vase your base it'll help with extra defense and will reduce the number of successful raids to your base now in my last beginner's guide i said that you should build a rainwater collector turns out in my three recent playthroughs of the game i didn't really need one since i've always had something to sell and water's value is next to nothing when it comes to trading i also seem to always find some while scavenging so build a rainwater collector if you must but personally, I wouldn't because I know I'm gonna find some before I run out. Also, in winter, rainwater collectors freeze up and will no longer be functional. You'll need to gather snow outside and melt it into water, using fuel and really... I find that very resource hungry since you also need fuel to heat up your shelter during this time. If you're a new player, which I assume you are since you're watching this video, I suggest that you build a radio, just so you'll have a general idea on what's going to happen in the next few days. The more you play the game, the less you'll need this, but if you're new, it would be nice to build one. Also, don't feed your survivors raw food. That just adds more harm than good. Speaking of which, when it comes to gathering food, you can find them while scavenging. Or you can do what I did and build two animal traps or cages. They use up bait, but they will also give you double the raw food in due time. How long it will take is random, but it's better than nothing. This is the point of the video where I talk about each one of the characters in this war of mine. The characters you get to use can be different from one another for every playthrough that you do. So I'll go about it one by one. Anton has the mathematician, mathematician? The mathematician trait. This lets him trap animals faster when it comes to animal cages. Erica sneaks quietly and makes less noise when sneaking while scavenging. Perfect for stealth kills and silent supply runs. Boris is strong but slow. He can't run very fast but he can carry more items in his backpack and is able to one-hit anyone with a hatchet. Bruno is a good cook, able to craft moonshine, cure alcohol, and cook meals with fewer resources compared to others. Sveta loves children and can cheer up child survivors from their sad status. Here's an interesting one. Emilia is a talented lawyer and is psychologically resistant to negative effects caused by stealing and killing an NPC. It also takes longer for her mood to worsen and recovers quicker than others. 
Kiria has the bargaining skills for trading, lowering the prices of items for the benefit of the player, whether it's a trade with Franco or a trade with one of the locations with possible trading. Marin is a handyman, meaning he is able to craft and upgrade using less materials compared to other characters, while Marco is a skilled scavenger giving him 15 inventory slots. His high inventory size is only bested by Boris who has 17 inventory slots. Being described as a skilled scavenger, his trait gives him a second discount bonus when scavenging, and some fraction of the total time spent discounted in looting a corpse and clearing out rubble with his bare hands. That's a lot of things to say. Basically, he's a fast scavenger. Pavle is a fast runner, so he can run faster than all other playable characters. Roman is trained in combat, increasing his chances in dealing more damage. It is rare for him to lose or rather fail in stealth kills, and he can kill bandits and soldiers without getting sad or depressed. Huh. And finally, Slata has bolstered spirits, allowing her to cheer up depressed characters with a much better chance of succeeding, as well as increasing the living conditions quality of the shelter, which reduces morale loss from negative events. With that said, check character states regularly and do your best to keep your mood up. It may not be as simple as hunger or illness, but it can break your character just the same. If one of your survivors does get depressed, the best way to fix it would be to increase your shelter's quality by heating it up if it's too cold, feeding the starving survivors, or keeping everyone healthy. Depression only really happens when you do a bad job at managing your survivors, and doing just that can actually fix it. Just be sure to talk to the depressed person ever so often, it'll decrease the chances of them unaliving themselves. Build a reinforced door and have weapons at the ready. Even though they are useful, you don't really need guns that early in the game, as crowbars, shovels, and hatchets count as weapons as well. This is especially useful on crime outbreak days, wherein raids are more frequent. Don't waste your medical supplies, you'll only need medications when survivors get to the sick or wounded state. Being slightly ill or slightly wounded will heal by itself with enough sleep. Bandage wounded survivors immediately, and if all is not possible, hospitals do exist in the game. Being literally wounded or terminal ill for two days will kill your survivor on the third day, so always have bandages and medications in hand. Do not waste them. Back to winter, two upgraded heaters will be necessary if you want to stay warm. Technically, just normal ones will be fine, but as someone who doesn't want to waste resources, improved ones will be much more efficient since they lose or rather consume less fuel, leading to much longer heat. You can also place these heaters wherever you want, so don't worry about structure placement, however, you can't relocate already placed objects, so keep that in mind. During the winter, you can also acquire water by melting snow or by trade. Winter sucks. Shovels speed up rubble cleanup, saw blades open graded doors, and crowbars open locked areas. I'm sure you already knew this. If not, well, there you go. Speaking of crowbars, always bring a crowbar on your first visit to a location. I guarantee you that there will always be a locked door somewhere in that location, and having a crowbar from the beginning will be useful as if you open every locked container or door on your first run, you wouldn't need to bring that crowbar again on the second. Pay attention! Sound and light are big factors in scavenging and exploring. Pick through doors, listen to talks, sometimes that information would be enough to decide on what you should do next. Climb up, sneak further, run out, just pay attention and it'll save you a bunch of times later on. Theft is a crime even when not detected. That also works in real life. Don't be that guy. Manage your time while scavenging. Do what you can in one night and if you're gonna do combat, do it in one night as well. Perform stealth kills, bring a weapon, and wear armor. Do everything right in one night and that way you'll only receive the negative hit of mood in one go, instead of multiple days. Check your map, read the history, and see what potential resources you could find. Be ready for dangerous ones and be cautious on well, cautious ones. These types of locations are usually the ones that have scripted events, fun but still very dangerous. And lastly, have fun. I know the game can be depressing at times, sometimes certain actions will affect you in a big way, but that's what the game is about, and the best way you can do is to learn and reflect on what happened. This War of Mine can be a difficult game, and if you're still concerned if this is something you really want to play, then click on this video where I made an honest review for this War of Mine. Like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me how much did this War of Mine affect you, cause this game really does affect people.